All right, so we do conceptual questions. We have this week matter waves and semi-classical models. Uh, let me do the usual thing that we've been doing the whole semester, asking our conceptual questions to perplexity and see how well it does. Um, as I've mentioned, uh, this is uh, really the exciting part of the semester where uh, I'm really interested in how well uh, uh, perplexity with the GPT-4 does compared to uh, ChatGPT last year. So, uh, because around here is where um, middle modern physics is where uh, ChatGPT with the GPT 3.5 wasn't doing all that well last year. So, uh, although I don't think these questions were the ones that ChatGPT was struggling with. Um, let me see if I, if I copy this. I'm trying to copy the, the image description. So when I paste it, oh, uh, it doesn't do anything. Um, figure shows. Oh, and then there's one more figure. Figure shows. There's an emission spectrum and absorption spectrum. The images on the right show. Yeah. Okay. All right. Explain general, um, I mean, energy levels, quantized energy levels in hydrogen atom. <laughs> that should be it. Uh, one significant fact about how atoms interact to light, with the light. Um, quantized energy levels, that one photon carries away all the energy difference, I think. Uh, let's see how perplexity answers it. Um, and uh, it's been a while since I've looked at my own model answer, so I don't quite remember how I worded it in the model answer. Uh, patterns uh, show when an atom absorbs energy, electron jumps, when they fall, they emit energy. Yeah, quantized. Um, Skinner explains is that the energy of the, yeah, energy of the photon relates to those transitions, yeah. So, yeah, very specific wavelength. Uh, and it's a specific wavelength. Conversely, yeah. Yeah, um, that's a good answer. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, a lot of... Um, this guy does make a lot of videos that I think I found useful for conceptual physics. I don't think I use any of his videos for this class. All right, that, that's good. Uh, let me move on to the next question. I guess, um, let me just ask the whole thing all in one shot. Uh, let's see how perplexity does it. And then uh, if it uh, skips over some of the questions, we'll go back and ask those uh, separately. By the way, the pronunciation of this uh, name, um, I've been saying it de Broglie for a very long time. I had a French speaker in my class about a year ago. And she said she should pronounce it de Broglie, and I, <laughs> I don't know, de Broglie is so much easier. De Broglie, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's a French physicist who came up with the hypothesis that uh, the P, momentum P is equal to, uh, do I want to write it down? Um, yeah, so the de Broglie hypothesis, uh, uh, by the way, names, pronounce it however you want. Uh, it's, fine. It's the same deal with the, in physics for the Kirchhoff's rules. Uh, it's a German name and there is a correct German way to pronounce it, but you know, if you call, pronounce it Kirchhoff, hey, there's no pronunciation police seeing if you are pronouncing foreign uh, physicists' names right. So this is the de Broglie hypothesis um, and that, that somehow this uh, relationship applies to everything. It's much more expensive than uh, anything that Planck or Einstein was imagining. So let me ask that question and see um, how it answers. So electron and proton, same speed. Proton has shorter wavelength because proton's momentum would be larger. Particle is accelerating hard as its uh, uh, de Broglie wavelength would shorten as its momentum increases. Um, let's see, see, wave like nature of uh, not easily observed because it's super short most of the time. Let's see how perplexed the answer is. <laughs> if an electron proton will have shorter, yeah, because inversely proportional, good relationship. 
Um, uh, let me erase what I wrote. And um, proton set, yeah, about 2,000 times greater, uh, much larger. Yeah, good. Uh, particle is accelerating, so yeah, as the moment decreases. Yeah, good. Yeah, and uh, that's a, I guess, the thing that we haven't seen with the other types of waves before. Whether you are talking about sound wave or light wave, uh, you haven't seen a wave wavelength of those waves change unless you are going through something like a refraction. Um, matter waves, because you know it, the wavelength depends on momentum. You do anything that would change the momentum of the particle, wavelength will change. It's a different kind of wave than what you have seen so far classically. See why is it not easily observed? It, because they are yeah, extremely small. Uh, you can do some simple number um, exercise, like uh, imagine an object with a hundred gram of mass. If if it's moving at even really uh, imperceptibly slow speed, like a micron per hour, it's a De Broglie wavelength would be really short still. You basically need a, uh, something around the, on the order of proton electron mass. Uh, where at some reasonable speed, like a meter per second, it would have reasonable kind of wavelength, like a nanometer. Uh, and when I say reasonable, I mean more like a measurable than, you know, like a millimeter. I think you, um, electron wavelength can be like a millimeter if uh, it's moving at w one meter per second. Inversely proportional, yeah, momenta are large. So, so short that beyond the capacity, yeah. And uh, in terms of, you know, how short is a wavelength to short, there's a, an idea called the Planck length um, that um, that would, uh, uh, that kind of gives you a good threshold for any length that's shorter than that. Uh, it's probably not physically detectable. So, um, so let's see. Um, uh, give me an example of a macroscopic object with a deeply wavelength equal to the Planck length. Uh, let's see if it gives you a good example. Um, yeah, that's that. And it'll give you what Planck length is. Planck length comes from just combination, uh, they didn't derive it, but yeah, that's the length, 10 to the minus 35 meters. Um, that's much smaller than even nuclear scale. So yeah, a, a small car moving at really small speed already has wavelength uh, smaller than uh, over on the order of Planck. Yeah. 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 And once you are talking about length, this is shorter than Planck length. You are not talking about known physics. So. Okay, so that was good uh, and good uh, good answer to the question I just made up. <laughs> okay, explain how it's uh, consistent with... Uh, oh, that I, I think uh, 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 Perplex would answer that well. That's the kind of question it answers well. And I find that, um, well... Is found out the right term. Um, so I've always had it described how Bohr quantized um, things for his semi-classical model that he quantized the angular momentum. And what he did ends up being that, but apparently that's not what he actually quantized. Uh, what he quantized is what's called the action of the electron path. Um, but um, it's, well, is he gonna describe? Let's see, uh, quantization electron in fixed or without negative energy. Uh, what? Okay, postulate is... Yeah, so this is what I've always been told. And, you know, it's physically not incorrect, so I'll still teach that. But I think historically what I've been told is uh, Bohr quantized the action, which is the the path uh, times the, 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 like, so the, the trajectory length times the momentum. Um, it, it's fine. Either way, it ends up being the same. Uh, De Broglie hypothesis is that. Uh, okay, consistency. Quantization of electron orbit. Yeah. So the circumference orbit ends up being an uh, integer multiple of wavelength. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, number one is the main thing, like that. Um, so De Broglie hypothesis gives you a way to understand why Bohr's uh, crazy assumption might actually be true. Uh, once you accept De Broglie's crazy assumption that <laughs> there's a relationship between momentum and wavelength. Uh, either way, it involves some crazy assumption. That's the nature of quantum mechanics. Um, yeah, both require is crucial. Yeah, yeah. And th this is now coming up uh, next week, uh, the more full um, uh, wave, mecha uh, wave mechanical model. Now, uh, Schrodinger equation um, is complicated, so we'll introduce it. We'll apply it to really simple systems, and that'll be it. We'll talk about solutions for some of the uh, more um, complicated, more realistic setups like uh, simple harmonic oscillator, but we won't try to solve it. Like upper division quantum mechanics class takes uh, a good number of weeks of doing that. So we in the lower division won't be doing that. So I think that's everything. Although answers look good. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a, um, And I think I mentioned this before. Uh, Tool like it can be, I think it can be a good uh, virtual Twitter for people who are uh, trying to learn. Um, and maybe I don't answer your questions quickly enough. You know, it's giving you instantaneous answer, and a lot of times it is actually giving you correct answer. Um, so if this kind of interaction helps you learn, great. Um, use it for that. I have no objection to anything that helps you learn physics.